Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for joining us well, and we also hope you have a great New Year. Well, we have a couple of guests from who are experts on Pennsylvania's economy, and then we'll get into roads and bridges and what we can expect, and we'll do all of that after these words. Welcome to the fast-paced and unrehearsed weekly discussion featuring the leaders who help shape your world. Join us as we address the issues that impact you each and every day. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, we have a couple of the state's leading experts on the economy. We're going to talk about many aspects of, of our state's economy. Joining me to do that is Luke Bernstein. He's the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry. And David Taylor, he's the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. And then, and then we'll get uh, Bob Latham on. He's with the Pennsylvania Constructors. We get into highways, the high, I call them the highways and byways, roads and bridges, and we'll see where all that goes. So a hugely important show with a lot of important information. All right, Luke, I want to join you. I'll tell you, uh, there was a big debate about the economy this past year, not just in Pennsylvania, but around the nation. It looks like it has improved. Uh, we get into the, let's skip the politics of it. In pure economic terms, is the economy better off now than it was a year ago? Well, we're still seeing a lot of the same themes that started out in 23 and that we're ending in 23. Inflation continues to be a major theme for people. And while you're hearing a lot of talking points that things have gotten better, I think if you ask the average family in Pennsylvania, Gas yeah. prices are still pretty high. Right. We have, while they're they're lower, uh, grocery prices are still high. You have food that is really dominating a lot of discussion, still pretty high. So I think people are feeling that. The other challenge that has persisted through much of 23, and I think will persist in 24, is workforce. So there was a recent study through the U.S. Chamber that said in Pennsylvania there are 74 people for every 100 jobs that are available. So workforce will continue to be a challenge, and then we have to look and continue to solve some of the workforce challenges, but that's been a continuing theme yeah. through 23. It will be a continuing theme, yeah. I believe, in 24. Yeah, David, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's exactly right, and we hear from our people that, um, you know, hiring is the biggest challenge, finding qualified new hires, um, to fill, uh, and that's just current positions. That's not even uh, looking over the horizon trying to expand operations, just trying to find enough folks to fill the positions that are available today. It continues to be a major challenge. I say this all the time. You go into a, a suburban or an urban area, and virtually every store has a sign out front that says help yeah. wanted, right? Well, but at the same time, this is also an opportunity. Yes, it's a problem, but if we're able to to, to help people who have been outside the workforce, long-term unemployed, people coming off of welfare, even people coming out of jail, if we can connect them with the skills to be able to take on, especially in, in manufacturing, these are family-sustaining jobs, we can give people an actual ownership stake in American society, and I really think that that should be our priority. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good point. But unemployment does, I mean, unemployment is not high, inflation, it's still there, but Workforce it's not. Workforce participation is not nearly what it needs to be. And so a as, a point. as a result, the low unemployment rate really doesn't reflect um, the overall employment situation. Good That's point. right. And, and it's who's looking for jobs. And so when we had COVID, you had 250,000 people in Pennsylvania leave the workforce. 125,000 of them came back. So of the 125,000 that didn't and aren't looking, many women, many 18 to 35. So addressing issues like childcare, skill and job training, other pieces of education, very important to get people back into, into the workforce to raise the workforce participation. Yeah. Those are key themes and that's but why how, we're having those challenges. Yeah, but David, how are people living if they're not working? Well, I mean, that's a great question because as you know, Luke said, that the, the cost of everyday life uh, has gone up and has stayed very high. There are a lot of folks uh, who are just making it paycheck to paycheck. paycheck and so yeah. this is why, you know, I mean, we need to have a pro-production agenda 
for energy because high energy prices drive the, the inflation, drive the higher prices of everything else. And so I think having a, a sensible energy policy to maximize yeah. domestic energy yeah. production, that that is the best way to uh, attack all of these all of these costs yeah. and to try to get inflation under control. Yeah, polls still state uh, the economy as the, the most important issue. Now there's some other issues that are that have moved up, particularly nationally, when you get to the situation on our on our border, you know, immigration and some and some health care and some other matters. But there's no doubt that the economy continues to dominate the discussion. You know, of course, and I think because it it, it impacts everyone. And so you go and look back on different presidential elections through the years. It traditionally has been either the economy or war to paint on yeah. those election items. So the economy has surged to the top of the issues. Dave mentioned energy, clearly incredibly important to keep our energy costs low. We are very blessed as the largest exporter of electricity in America right, right here right. in Pennsylvania, the second largest producer of natural gas. We need to harness that opportunity and continue to have a strong energy policy because when you really take a step back, where would Pennsylvania's economy be without producing and continue to produce low-cost energy, whether it's small businesses or all businesses or families, yep. any type of areas, that's why we need low-cost energy. All right, we're going to run to a break. We'll come back. I'll let you pick up on the subject. But when I also am going to ask you, what are the three or four things that need to happen to improve the economy uh, in, in, the, in, in the next year after these words? This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania State Education Association, bringing the power of a great education to our schools, our students, and our communities. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. All right, we're talking about many aspects of the economy the past year and looking ahead into New Year. But, David Taylor, before we move into uh, the economy for the new year, you had uh, you had a comment you well, wanted yeah, to make about energy. Yeah, I mean, it is true that Pennsylvania is an energy leader and that it can and should be a great strength for, uh, for our economy and for our commonwealth. But let's keep in mind, it was just last year on Christmas Eve that uh, we were on the edge of blackouts. Right. And so, you know, as, as the, the, the grid operator, PJM Interconnection, reports that the, the buffer, the margin that we have in the grid is continuing to diminish, that we have uh, energy production coming offline faster than we have new producers coming online. And so when it comes to energy policy, keeping the lights on has got to be the number one priority, which means yeah. that we need to have reliable baseload power, which uh, is wind and solar Will and these other things. Will we have that? Well, I, it's an open question. Because, uh, you know, we lost the Homer City Generation Station, which was killed off by the, the Reggie tax, which, again, Governor Shapiro has appealed the decision of the Commonwealth Court that Reggie is unconstitutional, which is another year during which investors will not choose to uh, launch uh, projects in Pennsylvania because they don't know what the outcome is going to be. And so, the, the, in a lot of ways, our leaders are playing with fire when it comes yeah. to our energy policy, that we need to make sure that we have enough base yeah. load power for ourselves and enough buffer in the grid to keep the lights on. Um, I'll get the specifics in a moment, but are you optimistic or pessimistic about the economy? I, you know, I flat out don't know. I flat out don't know. There's so much potential upside, and yet it seems that our political class is largely incapable of seizing those opportunities. Luke. Uh, I, I think overall optimistic, uh, optimistic because I think our, our opportunities outweigh our challenges. I do uh, share some of Dave's beliefs on that, though. It is a challenging environment. 
we have an opportunity to fix it. You know, this was a year of transition in Pennsylvania, and so I'm hoping next year, even though it's a political year, that we can um, yeah, great, surge f forward point. and try and put the right policies in place. Everyone's been in their role now a year. So that transitional period hopefully is over. We can come together and try and get some of the things finished that weren't finished in 23. Yeah. And so uh, that, that's why I feel we have opportunities there, but we've got to seize them. I mean, the challenges that we have, we can't address them, we can't tackle them. We, just have the we have to have the political will to get them yeah. done. And the governor needs to make good on a lot of the promises in the campaign, especially regulatory reform and, and permitting reform and all those things. We need government to move at the speed of business. And uh, again, he touched on the correct issues, but we haven't seen nearly yeah. enough of actual positive See, change. See, a few years ago, a lot of us were pessimistic about the economy because of our commitment to what I'll call the old industries. I'm not saying I'm not saying they weren't important, but there was a pessimism. Now there seems to be more optimism, more growth, and more development. Yeah, there, there are things that have been done that I think position us very successfully, and we have the resources in the state to be very, very successful. We really need to harness the right policies, and so uh, you know the Reggie Peel was I felt a step backward. Um, some of the permitting license reforms are a significant step forward. The continued phase down of the CNI, that's a step forward. Getting other tax reform policies, very, very helpful. CNI acceleration, and well, those things will get the economy moving. We've seen that work in other states, other states like North Carolina and Florida and Texas, Virginia. Policies have worked there. They can work here. Right. The other, the other factors. We've talked a little bit about education. We really need to think differently about brain drain versus brain gain, and how we can use education magnets in Pennsylvania people to leaving re this, recruit people and leaving retain this, those people. Yeah, people leaving the state. Yeah, I mean, and this and this is the opportunity. Pennsylvania has many really awesome institutions of higher learning, and a lot of people come to Pennsylvania to attend school. How do we keep those folks here in the Commonwealth? Well, the way to do that is to have a vibrant, uh, growing economy that creates opportunities that are both uh, uh, plentiful and promising. And uh, But to get to that place, we need to throw off business as usual in Harrisburg. We need to have pro-growth tax relief. We need to limit lawsuit abuse. We need to have regulatory reform. We need to build out the workforce. Um, you know, there are all kinds of things that we need to do. We, and, and I just, I wish that we saw more urgency because because pro-growth policies in other states are kicking in, and while, yes, yeah. we continue to put one foot in front of the other, um, most other states are outpacing us. That's All not right, good. we're out of time, but uh, you are both, I'm giving you a command. I know I'm commanding you. You come back and you give us updates on the health of the economy throughout Happy to the do year. So. Yes, sir. All right, coming up, guess what? Roads and bridges, we're going to get an important update. We all have to drive. Uh, we all have to use our roads and bridges. How do they stand now? What are their conditions? We're going to take that up with Bob Latham after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Cross State Credit Union Association. Credit unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, go to ibelong.org and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties representing the faculty and coaches who are devoted to providing quality public higher education for Pennsylvania's college students. Well, we all use them, and we use them quite frequently. I'm talking about Pennsylvania's roads and bridges. Uh, joining me to chat about that is Bob Latham. He's the executive vice president of the Associated Pennsylvania Constructors. All right, Mr. Latham, I have to start out with a question. The condition of Pennsylvania roads and bridges. Over the years, you've brought us up to date. You've kept us informed. Take it. Well, your intro is so right. Every, everybody uses roads in Pennsylvania, whether you leave your house or not, uh, because we're dependent on the goods 
uh, that come to us. That's a good point. Uh, so, you know, everything that comes to the grocery store, all the deliveries that come to your house, uh, a lot of people are now using uh, Amazon and other and other delivery services. Uh, there's a lot less uh, bricks and mortar. Talking retail. about all those packages that are at my house. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, but that gets back to your question about the condition of the road. So, physically, we've made a lot of improvements over the last 10 years. Uh, we've cut our inventory of bad bridges, as we say, from 6,000 to 3,000, but 3,000 is still a, a large a number, number, and yeah. we have a lot to a lot of work to do. Uh, but that increased traffic, uh, the increased distribution economy that we're seeing in Pennsylvania, you can't uh, look at any newspaper and not see that uh, there's a new uh, warehouse being proposed along one of our interstates, and that's having an impact not only on the physical condition of the roads, but also uh, yeah. traffic congestion and, uh, and safety. Now, in, or, in order to uh, put money into roads and bridges, it comes from the fuel tax revenue, which is also shared with state police operations, something you've talked about before. That's correct. So the uh, Pennsylvania uh, uh, lawmakers and policymakers made a conscious decision, uh, particularly uh, in, in 2013 with what we call Act 89, where we, we increased our fuel tax uh, considerably. Um, and what, how we fund our roads is through primarily through the user fee, which is through the gas tax, I guess, if, if you will. So our registration fees are low. So if you don't drive a lot, the, the, the cost to own a vehicle and operate a vehicle uh, is relatively low uh, compared to other states. Our gas tax, on the other hand, is high compared to other states because the more you drive, the more... Uh, the more you use the roads, the more you drive, the more gas you pay. And we'll talk about that in, 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 a, in a little bit. Unfortunately, there was a period of time when we were uh, driving a lot of that gas tax money over to pay for the operations of state police, and we made some, uh, some improvements there, and particularly Governor Shapiro had introduced the um, uh, public safety fund, uh, which is now going to f uh, fund the state police and, and relieve the motor so license fund from a lot of that. A sure. The issue here is... We want the state police funding to be adequate, but the question is, where does the state police money come from out of the state budget? That's correct. Um, and actually, the move this year to create this uh, uh, public correct. safety fund for the state police was a win-win for everybody, because a win for public safety. Uh, so we have to give the governor a lot of credit for coming up with that idea, and the legislature working with him on that. So what we're seeing is, finally, about five or six years ago, the high point was we were shifting about $800 million in gas tax money over to pay for the state police. And, and we've whittled that down over the last number of years, and now there's an agreement to get to zero over a couple of years uh, and augment the state police uh, uh, funding and through this public safety fund, which is, uh, which is an excellent uh, policy move in our mind, because that frees up... Uh, the money that people are paying now in uh, in their gas taxes for road and bridge right. improvements. All right. Let's. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about uh, the construction program, how it grew, and how important that is. And I also want to get a general sense from you about what parts of the state are still in the most need for sure. an upgrade. We'll do that and more after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. All right, uh, we're, we're obviously chatting so about something important, the funding for roads and bridges, and you brought up the differences that exist and why that funding needs to continue. Right. So we, uh, we had a, a federal, ed federal legislation that passed uh, a couple of years ago, which markedly increased uh, money coming from the Federal Highway Trust Fund. That's right. been a boost to Pennsylvania. We've increased our overall construction program from about two and a half billion dollars several years ago to just over three. That's good. Uh, that's good news. Uh, I would say the bad news is, is that the increased price of, of materials, particularly steel, uh, is uh, allowing us really to keep pace with inflation. 
So uh, Does the, this the deal buying purchase going to affect that. Well, uh, that the, the the discussion about uh, Nippon's purchase of U.S. Steel has brought has highlighted the fact that the, that steel prices have increased. I don't know that that purchase is going to necessarily uh, impact it uh, or that. Uh, that uh, move is going to impact it, but certainly what we've seen in this discussion is that steel prices have gone up, along with uh, concrete, uh, aggregate, and a lot of other things. Uh, uh, fuel prices drive the transportation costs of it, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. The, the, the point is, we're seeing uh, less and less consumption of gas uh, there uh, as a result of that. We've reached the floor in our in right. our gas tax. That's right. been in the news lately that the that the, the gas tax is dropping down yeah. to that. But we are putting floor. more money into construction, right? Right. We were able to do that through some of the money that's coming from the federal government, and of course, also what we talked about in the earlier segment, which yeah. is moving that money uh, from the general fund over to fund the state police and freeing up that money in the motor license fund. So, so it's really kind of a double-edged sword. We are putting more money, money into the into it, more yeah. into the fund. Uh, uh, but that's basically keeping pace yeah. with inflation. And in the future, we're going to have to continue to look for new re new revenue yeah. sources as we uh, as we move away from uh, greater and greater consumption of fuel, which, you know, we have a consumption-based tax uh, and then a policy to reduce consumption of that yeah. commodity. Good point. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to, in the future, find other things. But we've had another victory this year, and, of course, that was on... Uh, on safety in our highway work zones uh, with the automated speed enforcement legislation uh, that uh, that passed recently. And um, and that's going to do a lot for uh, uh, worker safety and also motorist safety. So uh, we want to just thank those legislators that, uh, that took the uh, sunset off of that bill and allowed us to uh, continue to try to get motorists to slow down in highway yeah. work zones. Yeah. That's good for everybody. We also have a very complicated state geographically. We have a lot, a lot of mountainous areas. We have urban, huge urban areas, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and mm -hmm. the third class cities. And then we have those that you, you know, the Appalachian Mountains, which run through a good part of the state. That has to complicate the road construction and repair aspects of our economy. There are, uh, we have a transportation system. Uh, you and I, I tend to talk more about roads, but we have to recognize that there are uh, public transit systems that are very, very right. important to our urban centers. They're uh, facing, uh, they're facing their own economic uh, issues. Uh, passenger rail is something that we want to try to expand uh, from Harrisburg to Pittsburgh and, 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 the, and the improvements be on that uh, capital corridor with Philadelphia. Uh, there's talk about a train system to New York from Scranton. And of course, we have ports. Uh, we have the Port of Philadelphia that everybody thinks of in Erie, but we have inland ports in Pittsburgh and the, and the, and the river system as well. So it all kind of ties together. Um, Right now, uh, we have a lot of money that's going into the uh, central Pennsylvania area. You see uh, improvements going on in uh, the Interstate 83 quarter and 81 quarter through central Pennsylvania, um, and uh, a little bit of lacking in western Pennsylvania right now. Okay, you have an assignment. Keep us, <laughs> keep us updated on these things. We'll all do. right, you all have a great new year, and thanks for watching the program.